today I'll be painting this amethyst crystal. I really enjoy drawing and painting crystals because they're full of nice sharp lines and hard edges, which I enjoy quite a bit. Uh, they're full of nice little details, but they're also very whimsical and you can kind of do whatever you want really uh, as long as you stick to a similar lighting source and uh, keep the overall shape in mind as you're creating. As I'm doing these drawings, I have an image search up on my computer and I'm sort of borrowing various ideas from different images, uh, borrowing different ideas about lighting and putting them together in a bunch of uh, different little specimens. So after drawing a couple of crystals, I decided to go with the top left one and I'll keep that drawing around. I, I always like to have a really nice detailed drawing when I begin a painting because it works as sort of a, a light and shadow roadmap for me as I go along. It can be easy to kind of lose your way with watercolor because unlike other mediums, you're painting from light to dark instead of adding the highlights uh, as you go along later. You always have to keep in mind what direction you're headed in so you don't accidentally paint over your highlights because they can be really difficult to get back. So I'm just freehanding this now. I'm uh, copying the sketch that I had made before directly onto my watercolor paper. There are a couple great ways to transfer a drawing to paper, but I will get into those in another video. So these are my two little heart boxes of paints. I have my warm colors and my cool colors. Mostly Daniel Smith, a little bit of Winsor Newton. Uh, for this crystal I decided to go with purple. So I'll be making a nice purple, a nice light purple with the quinacridone rose, the ultramarine blue, that'll be for the highlights. And then this is my amethyst genuine, and I'll be using that for more of the midtones and shadows. And as you'll see at the end of the video, it has a really nice sparkle. It's such a beautiful color. For brushes, I really love these Windsor Newton Series 7 Kalinsky Sable brushes. They come in all sorts of small sizes and they have really nice fine points. Altogether, you'll want your drawing on your watercolor paper. You'll want your paints. You'll want some water, your favorite brushes in different sizes. A scrap piece of paper is always nice to test the colors paper towel always, and a palette of some kind. For this one, I'm just using a plate because it's I'm not mixing too many colors. So here I'm just um, getting a sense of how my purple is going to look. This is just a mixture of the pink and blue. You can see how it makes a really nice light purple color. Uh, next, I add more of the amethyst mixture to the existing purple color and you can see how nice those darks um, turn out. So to get started, I'm just painting um, in the main areas with a, a, with a pretty uh, even wash of purple. My water is already a little bit purple, so I'm pretty much just painting with water right now and then just adding in a little bit of pigment here and there. Um, I have in mind that the light source is coming from the front left, so I'll want my brightest highlights to be in that orientation fa facing that light source. So what I'm painting around right now is going to be a highlight and then on each spire there's a highlight with that sort of orientation. And so I'm painting around those highlights uh, to get started. And you can kind of have fun with this first wash, at least I do. I like to drop in different um, uh, mixtures of color into the flat wash. You can see some pink going down, some blue going down. I even drop in a little yellow from a palette nearby. Uh, a lot of it will get covered up, but um, for my process, I typically layer a lot. And so for any highlights that I leave this tone, you'll see a little bit of that color peeking through and that makes me happy. So you can see my highlights starting to take some shape. Um, I don't know exactly where I want every highlight, so if I'm not sure, I'll just leave them both white. I can always paint them in later after I get a sense of uh, where the piece is going. 
So here I'm coming in with a slightly darker shade. Uh, I do have in mind, like I said, where the light source is coming from, and I also wanted secondary lighting. Uh, I wanted to have a main light source from the front, and then I was thinking of having like a light source from both sides. So what that means is the darkest parts are going to be like the middle of the spire, and then the highlight, and then on the sides there will be uh, dark areas, but also subtle highlights on the sides as well. And what I'm trying to do with the lighting is just communicate the form so that it looks um, a little bit more tangible. So watercolor is interesting and unlike other mediums you need to keep in mind your highlights from the very beginning instead of adding them just at the end. And the way I do watercolor, I layer as I go, and so my first wash, I'm almost always capturing the brightest highlights, my, my whites, the, the bare paper. And then with the second wash, I'm leaving those highlights, but also capturing the layer I just added, so capturing like the, the second highlights, the secondary highlights. And then from there, it's sort of a back and forth process as you put in the shadows, put in more midtones, and define those highlights as you go. When you are layering a piece, it's really important to let the paint dry before you go over it again. So get your color in, get the smooth wash where you want it to go, and then just leave it alone for a little bit. You can let it dry naturally or put it in the sun or use a hair dryer if you want. Um, sometimes I'll even have another piece going so that I can just switch gears and while that one dries and then work on the other one while the other one dries. So at this point, I'm still mostly working with my light tones, uh, that mixture of the ultramarine blue and the quinacridone rose, and I'm just starting to get into my mid-tones. So I'm starting to capture portions of the, the lightest layer and defining them through the mid-tones. In addition to keeping my lighting source in mind, I had also wanted to fade the crystal from the top of the spires being the most contrasted and dark to the bottom where it would be a little bit lighter at the base of the cluster, similar to how amethysts uh, look in real life. So I'm mostly using that Kalinske Sable number no. one brush, um, mostly because it's comfortable for me. I'm, I'm trying to get myself to use um, the bigger brushes longer uh, and to try to be more aware of what I'm, I'm trying to accomplish with the piece, but I just love my small brushes so much and I love uh, getting straight into those details. So I'm still going back and forth, adding different layers with slightly different tints, more pink, more blue, um, and I'm kind of creating facets and, and interesting shapes as I go along. 
and I really enjoy doing that. I think it looks really cool. It can be overdone, so um, whenever I do crystals, I'll sometimes, uh, if there's an area that looks too busy, I'll go over it with like a cohesion uh, wash, and it kind of softens everything and pulls it together. So now I'm pretty well pulling straight from the amethyst genuine mixture and uh, going into the darkest areas of the, of the amethyst. There's a subtle wash over the bottom. It was looking a little bit um, too sharp and I wanted your focus to stay up on the top of the spires rather than down on the bottom. So I just took some clean water and um, brushed over them and they've kind of faded together a little bit. Now I'm outlining the spires. I do like nice lines so I will outline my pieces uh, fairly often. I like to um, use a gradient a, a lot of times when I'm outlining. I'll use my darkest colors around the areas where I have the most contrast. And then again, um, like I said, I don't want your eye to be pulled toward the bottom too, too much. So I'll use a slightly lighter color to outline at the bottom. So I'm still working out exactly where I want the lights and shadows to be. and. Um, I'm just kind of stepping back and analyzing uh, using my reference, my drawing, and um, looking at the piece itself and trying to figure out how it will best tell um, the shapes, how it will best tell the story of the forms I'm trying to communicate. A little more pink to add interest and dimension. By this point, the crystal is pretty well done. This is just a, a polishing stage that I tend to go through with each piece. Um, I do like really crisp detail, so I'll spend a lot of time trying to make sure that the details are just in the right place but not too distracting or too overwhelming. It can definitely be overdone. I've totally overdone it before. Um, but other times it can be just the right thing to pull it together, so I like to try. So here um, I realized that uh, this shape in the front would have probably a highlight right here and I did not leave that in the drawing so I'm using my white charcoal, General's white charcoal, you can pick one of these up at your Michaels or Amazon or something and it's, um, I never in prefer to use a white medium to correct highlights, it never looks quite the same as the paper but as far as um, all the different techniques I've tried I really do enjoy this uh, the white charcoal pencil. I think it has a nice texture. I 
And that's it. There's our crystal. And we stylize it a little bit. <laughs>